Well, it took long enough. Superman's Secret Identity. A review that I was dying to get to, dying to talk about. A uh, book that uh, was first introduced by a friend of mine's, um, who said uh, this was a different take on Superman, and he was right. Um, I read parts of the last of the first issue and the whole entire second issue, and uh, has been looking for the whole entirety of the graphic novel to finish the whole thing. And it took long. <laughs> it took me really searching New York for this. It took a, took a small little uh, mom and pop comic book shop uh, in Park Slope, Brooklyn to find it. But I did, and uh, once I started reading it, I couldn't let go. Um, I might as well just get right straight to it. This is going to be a multi-part um, review. It's pretty much going to be broken up the same way as um, the original comic book issues was breaking up. And the reason is to follow this because this is not just a typical Superman origin slash um, different scenario um, comic book. There's a lot of difference between this comic um, versus the other origin stories that are now being currently released or have been released in the past. And I might as well just let it out there right now. If you are a purist, if you're a person who believes that the Superman origin should never be changed, who believes there should not be a different take on Superman, who should not be, uh, Superman should always be what it is, he came from Krypton, he landed on Earth, he wasn't too sure of himself, he found out who he was, um, he learned more about his, um, about his um, hidden origin through his father, Jor-El. Um, if you're going to judge it on that, um, based on the other comics you read, including the movie's adaptation, chances are you're not going to like this book. Um, this book doesn't follow none of that. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, this is Superman that has nothing to do with Superman. Superman is actually a, actually a reference in this book. Um, this book is based on our time, not on the DC fictional time. Um, he works in New York. Um, he's actually in a real city of, of, of Kansas. And the story um, doesn't even involve him being in space. There is a hidden origin here, but it's been mentioned way, way, way later in this book. And I'm saying this because, again, over the years, especially with the uh, movie Man of Steel and the upcoming movie Batman and Superman that is coming out, there has been a sense of conservatism when it comes to um, more popular um, superheroes, particularly Batman, Superman, um, these characters, um, a lot of the fans are considered interchangeable. They have to follow a formula, they have to follow an origin story, um, even though if you look at other um, generation of comics and even television shows and movie shows, they too have changed it up. And this one is changed it up to the degree that is based on a kid who has the same name, Clark Kent, who finds out he has the same powers of Superman, but he's not the Superman. Um, in fact, he it pretty much has a bit of the envy towards Superman, and there's a lot of reasons, which is why I decided to break it up into two diff into four different chapters, four different reviews, because each of these chapters shows a different take on how these this um this Superman is represented, especially in the beginning, which is entitled surprisingly Smallville, which is why I'm actually did the review as Smallville, even though technically he'd have not lived in Smallville. Basically. This tells the story of what if someone else, what if someone else who just by coincidence um, is a normal guy who's, who's named Clark Kent, who was actually a geek and dweeb, not very popular, actually comes with the same powers. What decision, what path, and how would he go about doing things um, that will not only he can um, to do good deeds or choose not to do good deeds, but actually keep his secret identity a secret? Also, keep in mind that this book, throwing it out there right now, don't have a supervillain. You're not going to see the villains that you normally see, like Lex Luthor, Brainiac, uh, and so on, in this book. In fact, the true enemy 
in this book is actually not the villains but the government and there's actually a reason for it and as you read it there are legitimate reasons for it depending on how you view the situation you get to see why the decisions he made was pretty much for the best for him and for the people he loves that has been that's going to be shown in this book so if you want reading this book and you're looking from it from a point of view that I'm not gonna like this book because it's not gonna it's not Superman it's not uh, what I come to expect from Superman you're not gonna like this book but if you like a very rich story that tells a tale who tells a, a beginning a middle and end for the man who have gotten who's been actually blessed with having this power of Superman and what he plans to do with it and how he goes about doing it a little bit. If you like a story like that, you're going to enjoy the story. And to me, it, it really all depends on how open-minded you are with the character Superman just in, in itself and how much you can actually tune out the fact that he's not Superman. He, he that, that, that comic book throws it out there right away. And how you can actually and for the for the better of for the better of, of part of this book, how you willing to see where this particular car can't goes, where his journey goes. Let's start with the first um, issue of this book, which pretty much takes place in Kansas. Um, he is a person in, that uh, that has grown up with the name Clark Kent and the baggage that come with it. He's being bullied because his name is Clark Kent and his family members and friends isn't making anything any better. Right away, you see the resentment for Superman. It's not like he hates him, hates him, but the fact is that everybody reminds him that he has the same name as the character. Yes, comic books are referenced in this book, but it's referenced in the right way, not a wrong way. And the event that you see it is his birthday he gets all these gifts from his friends and almost every last one of these are Superman um, Superman gifts uh, from Superman posters the calendars to dolls he's having all this for him and he's getting it every year um, to the point where he doesn't even want to see him he takes it because number one he wants to not um, disappoint his relatives he doesn't want to make them sad he doesn't want to come out as being unappreciated but the moment he takes them guess what he does he puts it in his room he leaves it alone he let it go you have a jock of course and you have a girl who's supposed to be like the stand in for Lana um, who cares who, who, who's concerned about him but you know he's not cool enough for him he's out of her, her league and you also have the football player who is the same way um, he's picking on him he's you know basically uh, showing his, you know, macho-ness, and you would think that because uh, the, you'd be safe in the geeks table where all the dweeks and geeks and dweeks um, hang out, guess what? Then he's not, because guess what? They make fun of him as well because of his name. Um, and it shows very well. The story is showed very, very well through his eyes. He is basically telling you what he's going through. And I kind of like the move that they have done here. Um, he is doing this for a typewriter. Um, an old-fashioned typewriter. And the bubbles, which I'm going to show you right here, are very clever. I actually I dig what they did with the bubbles. If you see a bubble like this in the comics, I'm going to a little closer here if you guys can see it. I know it's a little bit. If you see a, a bubble like this in the comics, he's talking. All right, he's the one making the conversation. Then you have the traditional bubbles um, in this book, and the traditional bubbles pretty much is uh, what's uh, is the dialogue that he's having with um, his family members, his friends, whatever. Um, but it's very, very good that they do this because it, it shows that he's actually chronicalizing what he's going through, and it's done in such a way that is actually good. This is not a near perfect style of bubbling, and I say near perfect because there are one or two times where when you're reading it, you got to be careful not to get off because sometimes they throw a bubble in that his dialogue, and you got to know when um, to actually uh, to stop and actually make sure that you're going into the right order, which is something of a, of a habit that a lot of comic books, especially graphic comic books I've been reading lately, has been doing, and they haven't been really doing a good job of actually making sure to tell a reader, okay, this is where you stop, this is where you go on, but in this case, it wasn't too much where a point where it, it drove me off, but 
this is the kind of bubbling I actually like. It is similar to the one it did with the Red Sun, where the red lettering is Superman's thoughts. Um, and the other stuff that is not bubbling red is this actual dialogue. It did the same here, and it was actually more clever. So he's basically explaining his daily life and, and how he goes outside to, to camp and to hike, um, how um, he wanted to go to other places and other forms until his father mentioned the Fortress of Solitude, where he almost did didn't go, and you pretty much get the feeling that he doesn't want to be reminded of a great icon, um, of a great superhero. One day he goes camping, um, he was sleeping, and next thing you know, he's waking up to find that he's floating on air. He's actually flying. He's actually found out that he does have Superman powers, and he doesn't know how this is possible. He doesn't remember any indication that his family that he had to power his family never mentioned to him and it was one point where he actually without just throwing it out there actually asked them do I have a special gift that you didn't tell me about and the family members just pretty much they say oh, there's nothing going on it's, it's, it's alright you, you know, you're good basically just think he's, he's joking and not realizing he actually mean business and I actually like that because it desperately leaves his powers as a mystery. We really don't know in that first chapter how he got his powers from. It just shows up. We know eventually it may be explained, but it's not explained. And it actually keeps the mystery of how did he get Superman powers when it's already been recognized he's not Superman. Keep in mind, we know that he comes from another planet. We know that the gravity, um, as well as the um, the sun, um, is uh, the main purpose of his powers. Here, it's not like that. Um, he's just got his powers. Now, he's flying around. He's having fun. He's having a good time. And he's realizing he can use his power to, to his advantage. He embarrassed the bullies, but not to an extent. Um, and for, for reasons, it actually made him more aware and more appreciative and to the point where he even though he could easily you know do some more outsmarting with the bullies he did it one time he doesn't really do it much again this is where the question of what does he do with his powers what what he's going to plan to do with his powers and we get a first taste of it when he saves someone from drowning off um, the coast um, there was a big uh, storm the guy was left out there, um, the boat was tapsizing over, and uh, just like the blue blur, he just grabbed the guy, put the person on the um, on, on dry land, and his vision, he says, okay, I moved fast enough, there's no way they can catch him, but someone did, and now the rumors of this superhero comes around, and didn't exactly make him any better when it turns to his bullies, because his bullies mind, hey, you look like you got competition, Clark, uh, <laughs> just be look out if I were you, and that's when the, that's when the buzz started coming out, who is this guy, why is it he's doing this, how come he's hiding, um, and it's to the point where, where this Clark can actually was hearing the rumors, hearing the buzz, seeing the papers, and he's like saying, I wish it stopped, but in, in his head he says, I really don't want to stop. And you, you get to see a lot of things flowing in, in him that you never really normally would have seen in the beginning. Um, should I continue using his powers, powers, which he wants to use? Should I go outside to get help because obviously my parents don't know anything? which he does. And all the stuff there has his benefits, but also has its consequence um, as this chapter moves forward. Let's start with one of the characters here. I'm going to show you who this character is because I think it's important that you see this character up front. This is a very important character and also a very difference maker. Um, this character here, which is which right here, she is a very difference maker for a lot of reasons. And uh, the reason is because she is a person who really wants, in many ways, wants to talk t to Clark, wants to get his information. I believe they call her Wendy, and she is the character who really turned the tide for Clark in a way that is bad and good. And I'll explain it as I go on, of course. She want, he comes to her saying, look, I need to talk to you. I don't want uh, you to take any films. I will give you my interview, my exclusive interview, and we'll take it from there. And she's happy. She's getting a first-hand glimpse of this mysterious guy who's been saving people, helping people out. Um, and she wants to scoop. Things go a little sour, though, when 
it was revealed that she had broken his trust. And what happened is he found a camera hidden and he destroyed the camera. He said, I told you not to do what I ask you to do. And he moves away. Now, she's afraid of him, but she's saying, no, 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 come back. Um, this is, no, no, I was just trying to do helpful research. She's lying through her teeth. You can actually can tell. Uh, but he laughs. And in his mind, he's like, why is she afraid when she was the one who betrayed him? And this is something that he didn't even really understand. And that's something that he uh, would pretty much figure that out more so in the next chapter than this chapter. But it was very, very clear just from his particular, uh, just from that interaction that he realized his powers is something that no one didn't understand that um, that their curiosity but there's also a sense of fear of what he can also do with these powers if he was to run amok there's also a sense of greed involved and this is where the chapter slowly reached that climax where he's hearing the bully that picked on him and he's hearing everybody else saying hey, man if I was hit that guy I will use those powers for everything I will you know I will you know be a man now I'll never have to worry about working a day in his life again and that's clicking in his head because he does have the power he does have the strength um, why shouldn't he not take advantage of it and get rich? Well, he found out the hard way when the, it was a Mardi Gras costume party and he came downstairs wearing the Superman outfit. This is the first time we're seeing him in the Superman outfit. All Superboy, whatever you prefer in this. And uh, the parents was like, okay, um, we never thought you were ever wear that again. To be honest with you, we thought you was getting a little bit uh, pissed off about the, the the notion of of the Superman stuff. And uh, our fa his father admittedly said that, uh, "Hey, uh, I think I made a mistake of naming you Clark Kent." Really, you think? But that's um, the gist of it. He's coming down and he's you know dressed into this costume. He goes out and no sooner that it goes out it leads you right into the action a massive explosion happened down down downtown he's like the bluebird swooping in saving people you know getting people into coverage um and he comes across the classmate who was buried in rubble he heard him and if he and basically rescued her and she immediately recognized who it was it was caught right there and he was gonna just let it be like that let them take the pictures let them see him lift this massive ton of rubble and then she saw the reporter. And before this happened, the reporter was on the phone with her superior saying, you're going to get the story. She said, don't worry, I'm going to get the story. I'm going to get the story. But you didn't know how she was going to get the story. It turns out she deliberately planted a bomb downtown to lure him out. And once, he, that, once that was discovered, it was automatically... It was automatically just dawn on him why he needs to keep his powers a secret. Because there are people out there that will do anything to, to reveal him and will also will also take advantage of him in many in many ways. And so when he saw his her, his her face, and I'm I'm gonna show the picture here because this, I think the picture says a thousand words here. This this picture alone is very, very big because it really shows just how much that person is willing to do to basically get a scoop. This is how determined this person was. And there she is. Look at that picture right there. Let me see if I can put it in that small camera here. You see him as a Superman here, but I want you to focus where my finger is. See where my finger is? You see how rage that is? Right there. That's what Clark saw. And that alone pretty much woke him up. She didn't care for him. She didn't care about where he come from. She just cared about getting the major scoop. And she, when she said, that's mine. He's mine. I found him first. That's all she cared about. And, Superman, and he knew, Clark Kent, this Superman, realized, I can't, I, I gotta keep it a secret. I, got, I cannot allow um, this to happen because this is, it, people are gonna go all over the place on, on me. Um, there's going to be fear, there's going to be play involved, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff involved that is not going to be helpful, not only towards my family, my friends, but for anyone who I'm trying to save. And so he did the wise thing of letting the, the massive rubble collapse. 
Um, and um, that pretty much solidifies that, hey, this was all fake, this was all fraud. And the papers even said that was a fake, that was a fraud. Uh, and pretty much nobody ever thought about it again. Now, the woman was sent to a mental ward because of what she had done um, and the lives she had taken. But uh, there was no resentment towards, towards, towards Clark Corner. He, she just felt sorry and she needed help. But that was a wake-up call of why he needed to keep his... Um, is give a secret. Um, most of the time, when it comes to superpowers, you, you know, and especially with um, the Superman, um, Superman um, genre, how they always seem to show how why he keeps his identity is always something because um, you don't want to get near his loved ones because people out there will hurt you and all that stuff. And this one, he did. He found out firsthand of what could happen or what may have happened just by the look of that one reporter. That look, look by the one reporter pretty much says it all and why he needed to make sure he stays out uh, out of the public eye in terms of you know revealing himself to the world. Also, the factor is that before that whole incident happened, there were two fighter jets who spotted him but didn't really make any pursue him. And that also played a very very important part in the next couple of chapters because needed to say that was not the last he saw of the government. In short, um, the bullies, um, including the girl he saved, became good friends. They still going to pick on him. They still consider him a dweeb, but it's not as uh, as severe as he once were. And he's learned to deal with it. He learns to accept that. And that pretty much was the gist of the first chapter because <coughs> the first chapter sets up the origin, the beginnings of what he will later become this world Superman, this universe that they made um, that will be followed. We're going to follow through for the next issues. And I gotta say, I was very impressed by what they have done. I was very impressed with how um, the words slowly sm smoothed up along from each chapter. And I had no problem following what was going on. I had no pr um, no problem with what they was trying to say and why they was trying to say it. I felt the reason for his resentment towards the name was understandable. I mean, hey, family's not doing him any favors by keep on reminding him that he has the same name of Superman. Um, he has memorabilia. Although I... We'll admit that if after a while, I'll, I'll probably hang it in the wall because that's a collector's item, so I'll, I just hang on to it. Uh, I don't know if he threw all this away. I seriously doubt he kept them because it never was mentioned again for any of the chapters. But overall, it was a good start towards the, um, towards the books, towards the series that they were going for, uh, because it's a, it set up the arc for this character. This character needed that chapter. It really did because it really sets up what his journey was going to be and why he made the decision to keep his identity secret as well as pretty much be Superman without much revealing that he's Superman. Uh, and that's actually something that is very hard to do and, and thankfully this book has done it. This book has done it very, very well. And I'm going to touch on to it in other chapters. Overall, um, Smallville which is title, which he's not really in Smallville, by the way. He's in a, he's in an actual real. This is actually taking place in a real part of Kansas, so I'm just gonna keep that to you guys right here. Um, and by the way, like I said, every city that you're gonna see here actually exists. It's not Metropolis. This is not Gotham City. We're doing it in real time, um, and the comic books are recognized as comic books, except this character. Um, has the powers of one of the greatest um, heroes of all time. And again, I have to say to this, if you're a purist when it comes to this kind of stuff, you may not like not only this chapter, but the other chapters come through it. So there's no point in me actually, you know, trying to convince you to, to read this book if you already have the gone conclusion. But if you're open-minded to it, this is a good start to the chapter. And I was very happy to have gone back and have read this book gone back to read the second um, chapter. I had a whole lot of fun reading the last two chapters to really get a great feel, a great sense of what I was of what someone else's version of a Superman is. And keep in mind, this is a different take on Superman. It definitely is. And um, I'm going to continue talking about that, but in the next um, review. So until then, J77, signing off.